Dear students, welcome to another online tutorial. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to work with functions and with classes in MATLAB and also with scripts. So uh, this is going to be a little bit more basic uh, and it's intended for those of you who find uh, all these things a little bit confusing. So I'm going to take it a little bit slowly. Okay, first off, note that in MATLAB, you're always in some folder somewhere. This is important because it matters for which functions you can see from your current point of view. So you can see I'm in my Dropbox and Advanced Micrometrics code intro to classes. So right now, out here in my current folder, I can see that there's nothing here. I can also press LS to list the, the files that are here, and there's nothing here. So let's create the first uh, file, which is going to be a script. And I tend to call my scripts main as kind of a driver file. So from main, I'll be running all my things. So put in a name up here. And then let's start thinking about uh, anonymous functions. It's the first type of functions. So let me create an anonymous function here. The way you create an anonymous function is you set f equal to and then at x. This indicates, this at indicates the MATLAB, this is going to be an anonymous function. And then let's just create a polynomial. So 0.5 times x squared plus 4. And uh, this dot times means that if x is a vector, it needs to do element wise squaring. All right, so what can we do with this f? First off, we need to run this segment to save it. So either we can copy this line and paste it over in the command window, or we can just hit uh, on Mac, it's command enter, or it's control enter on Windows, and it'll run this cell here, or this section. So now we have f, so if I click f, enter, then it prints what f is and tells me, oh, it's an anonymous function, it looks like this. Good, so what can we do with f? We can evaluate it at some number. Here we go, f of two, f of one, lots of fun with that. And we can also plot f, but notice if you just go plot f, it doesn't really work because plot expects you to give it vectors. So we need to create some x's over which to plot f. So I'm going to uh, go uh, create my x's like this. I call them. I'm going to call them xx. Actually, let's put it over in the script. Uh, lin space is a convenient function here. So let's plot x over minus one to one, and we want a hundred points. So I'm going to run this section again by clicking Command Enter, and now xx looks like this. So it's a long column vector. It goes from minus one all the way up to one. And now we can do, what we can do is we can plot, uh, we can compute f of each of these x's like this, and that's a vector as well. So notice that if we were to remove this dot squaring and run it, then if I go f of xx, it doesn't work. It says, you're using squaring, then uh, it needs to be a matrix that's square. And so if you see that error, it means that you've forgotten a dot uh, somewhere. Okay, so now we can plot x and f of x. Oops, I forgot to run this section here. Here we go. Beautiful. This is our uh, polynomial. Good, so this is an inline function. Now let's try uh, Let's try putting f in a separate function. Okay, so we're going to create a new function over here. New file function. And let's call it fct for function. I'm going to open it. Here we go. So MATLAB's already filled out some stuff. It's going to take an input x and return an output. Let's call it y. And then we can put A cool polynomial. Okay, and we're gonna have it do exactly the same thing, but the way that we do it over here is we go y equal to, and then the same thing from before. And then once the function has run this part and gets to end, it's gonna return y. 
Okay, so let's do the exact same thing here. Um, now we can go FCT of two. Let's put it over in the terminal here. And that's six and F of two is also six. Good, they give the same thing. And then let's go plot XX comma F uh, CT of XX. Here we go, looks like the same thing. And in fact, we can plot the two functions together. Uh, they're gonna look very similar. And I'm gonna tell it that I want this to be a solid line. And the other guy I want to be dashed line. This is how you tell MATLAB this. And you can see that they're right on top of each other. You can tell that it's changing color uh, between blue and red, this thing here. Or it's hot. perhaps it's hard to see for you. Good, so here we have we've put the function into a class or into a into a separate function file. Now suppose that we want to put different things uh, uh, in the same file. So we're going to have many functions in the same file, but we want to be able to access it from outside. And we're going to put it into a class. So we're going to go new file, class. Um, I'm going to call it cool underscore class. Okay. So here, MATLAB has all also filled out some stuff, a name here, and some description will go, uh, contains cool stuff. We're not gonna use properties for anything. We're almost never gonna use it for anything. Methods, here's the only important thing. You need, it needs to say static, because that means that these methods can be accessed from outside. And then here, we can just put the very same thing that we did in function. So we just take our function, and we put it here and then I want to make it look nice so I go commit I, I mark this and go command I or control I on, on Windows and it's gonna uh, indent it so it looks properly okay so how do we access the function there well we simply go cool underscore class dot FCT of two Nice, and we can even call it something else. Let's call it funk. Let's actually call it funk. So cool underscore class dot funk of two does the same thing. And if we take plot of xx comma cool class dot funk of xx, then we get the same picture we've been seeing all along. Okay, but we can put other functions in here as well. How about, for example, uh, double num, which returns the double of x, then uh, we can say cool underscore class dot double underscore num of two and we get four. But we can also access that from within the, the class here. So suppose that we want to uh, double x before we square it and we're too lazy to work out the math for it, then we could go say let's call this z and then say z is equal to cool underscore class dot double num of x so now it's going to call this function first create z and then output y okay so if we plot the two functions together as we did before we can go plot and actually if you hit the up arrow it's going to show you what you've done before that starts with this command um, Maybe I didn't put it here, it's in the script. Here we go. Then we can show them together with F. So let's use cool class dot funk. And now they look different, right? Uh, the red, the dotted one, dashed one here, that's the, the new one. So it's doubled the X before doing the polynomial. 
Okay, so classes can call functions from within the same class, and classes are a really neat way of organizing a lot of stuff. So later on, actually, uh, if uh, you're you're going to be doing, um, if I go into the uh, um, classes file here, we're going to be looking at all of these maximum likelihood, nonlinearly squares, and all of this. And if we go into these classes here, then and let me collapse some of these uh, functions here. Here I have a, an estimator and it has one of the functions is simulate data set. Another function is starting values. There's a criterion and there's a, an estimate function. So you can see that it makes sense to gather all of the functions that relate to NLS, nonlinear least squares, within this same class here. And then we can just uh, pass, we can just use NLS to uh, dot simulate data set or NLS dot estimate um, to conveniently access all these functions. So that's all I had for you today.